now live. So let's wake out of the way. I will start doing the intros again. Um, for the real streams. Today is Wednesday? No, today's Thursday. Oh, I was supposed to stream last night. Oh well. Um, doesn't matter. So, uh, let me just go ahead and post on Twitter that we are now live. It is the last day of 2015. Okay, so one of the problems is that uh, when the game starts, it's not always in the mood. I'm just gonna take a screenshot so I can post to Twitter. All right. Hey, Treeform! It's been a while. Well, I haven't been streaming, but uh, how how is it going? How is your last day of 2015? I was thinking of going out, but I've got a bit of a cold, so I'm going to stay in instead. Uh, just take it easy. Plus, I didn't work on the game for like two weeks, so I'm kind of really itching to get back and make some real progress. So this is invert mode. Right now, I'm just hitting the U key, and I'm switching in between these two modes. Uh, this is a how it's going to work in the game, but you know you don't just get to um, uh, later. I'm, I'm I do coffee. I find that that kind of helps. Um, but um, so you know, right now I'm just hitting you, switching between them. That's not how it's going to work in the game. It's more just for me as I'm testing stuff. Uh, and basically, what's going to happen is when you are in invert mode so you would actually like hit a button to go into invert mode kind of like this so we're going to make that today and then once you're in invert mode to get back into normal mode it's actually the screen just over time slowly fades to white it'll take much longer than this like this is way too fast um you know i, I want you to actually have like a minute or so in that space but I also don't want it to take too long for you to, like if you want to get back into normal mode, 
You shouldn't have to wait in a minute each time. Um. That's more of a design problem, so let's just kind of keep working on that. stuff Matt does yeah I'm, I'm back in Chicago now um, I'm, I'm very happy to be back streaming working on the game um, so yeah so this this although I had this big design breakthrough with the invert mode that I'm very happy with because um, like I, I was just talking about this on Twitter but I had wanted early on I kind of wanted a, a, a day night cycle but it didn't really work for the game because it's not, you know, the geometry of the world isn't on a spherical planet. So there's no, there's no sun or moon, right? There's nothing like, it doesn't, doesn't make sense to have that. Those are, day night cycle only makes sense if you're on a planet, um, which you are not in this game. But having the invert mode ends up giving me that exact same uh, yeah I know what you mean about that um, I am sort of just talking but it's still very much a work in progress and anyway I think Having this where it's like slowingly gets set. Yeah, so it, it, it slowly fades to white, and at that point, to it kind of acts as like a bit of a time limit. And there are ways to reset it so you have a little bit more time in this world. This feels a little, this looks like it, this feels like it t it's taking too long. Hey, David Kilmer. Uh, I don't. I do it manually. Shader Forge. Um, I, I Shader Forge doesn't let you do post processing shaders, which is what I mostly work with. Like Shader Forge lets you make material shaders to put on objects, um, but mine are post processing shaders, which go on top of the camera, and. Um, those Shader Forge does not. I did download Shader Forge like early on when I was learning how to write shaders. I downloaded Shader Forge, and then I found out it didn't let you do post processing. Um, so I just I, I I do write it manually now. Oh, so I'm not very good um, at. Um,
I'm not very good at stuff that is um, node-based programming. There's there's one there's a Shader Forge is a plugin for Unity that does material shaders. I mean, it's like a node-based thing that that just lets you um, kind of combine all the different shader functions that are available. Um, I don't I don't use it because I don't I don't really use um, material shaders. But if I did, that that is very useful. It's it's like really good for designers. Um, yeah, Mocasmo, yeah, for if you're doing post processing, I there isn't there's the Unity Wiki is kind of good. This like CG CG Wiki, I think it's this Unify. No, wait. Hold on. Not that one. This is this is nice. Um Whoever wrote this is actually, it's actually pretty funny. I would start with this and just, the, like the nice thing is they comment everything. Um, so like I would start with this, get used to the structure and like comment out and comment, you know, comment out things and see what happens. Um, That's that's actually still what I do when it comes to working with um, when I'm trying to learn a new shader thing. So that's really great. Um, yeah, the node-based shader thing is Shader Forge. Hey, Jet User, Battle Battlefront. Is that whatever you're talking about? This is obviously not a good way to, to time it at all. I could just write a timer. That would make a lot more sense. So you have 30 seconds? No, that's that's a, this is too fast. This is not enough time. Okay, so invert mode, um, just a heads up there, if you don't want to spoil stuff, maybe this would be a good time to dash out for a bit, because I am going to talk a bit about the invert mode. Um, it's still a work in progress, it might change, and there are still a lot of other elements of surprise, but um, yes. Hey, Garrett. So, this is to answer David Kilmer's question about invert mode, which is very much this thing I've taken from Starsea Pilgrim. So, um, and I met up with Draken during the break. I was in Toronto. Um, it's where I'm from, and he's there. So, you know, the game is about navigating architecture, and when you change gravity, your relationship with the architecture changes, right? Like this, it, it, it changes the ability to walk on walls, um, changes your relationship to, to the architecture. So for example, this, this is not a dead end, right? In another game, maybe this is like, that's a dead end. You gotta go back, but this is just another path. Um, and every time you rotate, the world looks different. So what invert mode does is there is a button that you'll press after you finish a bunch of the puzzles. And it takes you to invert mode. 
And when you are in invert mode, you actually, you cannot change gravity. So this is sort of like another way of playing with the same mechanic and making you look at architecture differently again. So now what, it's kind of funny because now it's like back to, man, my trackball is really stuck today. So now this is a dead end. Like you can't, you wouldn't be able to walk on there. So it's changing the way you look at the space again. Um, so for example, like this is, that is no longer a room you can go into. And there is, there's different stuff you can do. Um, and I was thinking what happens with invert mode is it's, um, there's like the, when you're in it, it does sort of the same thing as Starseed Pilgrim where slowly the world fades to white and once it's fully white it puts you back into the normal world so it's it's just sort of giving you this like so there there's sort of like a time based task you have to do it's not going to be it's not like super executiony um oh so i think this should definitely be a um right I just feel it out and iterate over time. Yeah, I don't, I have like, yeah, this this first level has been redesigned like 50 times. Um, there's no, there's basically, um, yeah, I don't, I don't even draw stuff like, uh, like I have a basic idea of the kind of the overall level. Um, but then once it starts, it's just a lot of iterating and tweaking. And luckily, with the with the art style, it's it's very easy for me to do. Um, yeah. Why would the player? So it's not the player doesn't choose to. It is part of the core game loop. It is in that in Star Sea Pilgrim, you have to go into the invert world. So like, you can go into areas the the ember world completes it right it's like um it's like ridiculous fishing you ridiculous fishing also this is this is this is known as folded level design in which you go through the same space but with a different mechanic um uh to answer mokismo's question i want to hear more about the um your star sea pilgrim ripoff or how, how, how you did that. Um, the, so the puzzles in, in the invert mode are very different, right? So it's, it's, it's folded level design. So Strike Sea Pilgrim does it. It changes your relationship between, it inverts a relationship between land and space, which I think is really brilliant. Uh, and Ridiculous Fishing actually has a much cleaner way because when you are going down, you're avoiding all the fish and then when you go up, you got to try to get as much fish as you can. So it's, you go through the exact same space. And you do it twice using a different uh, mechanic. And, and in, in, in Ridiculous Fishing, it's actually really nice because the mechanic is pretty much the opposite, right? It's like instead of avoid, now you want to get all of them. Uh, Starseed Pilgrim is a little bit more nuanced. Um, but it still has that same, and, and the same thing with this. Um, so, and I was thinking, like, we'd have a... I, I also think it'd be really interesting just sound design-wise, just have it completely change when you're in invert mode. And I was thinking maybe having, like, a timer, like a... Or, or something to indicate the passing of time. And... Uh, No, I no no no. I don't think uh, I don't think they're actually sure. You can you can say that. You can tell Rami. It's just like theirs is so clean, you know. It it's like like 
Van Beer's inverse mode just like fits in perfectly, where Star Seed Pokemon's like a little more like that. I actually meant it as like a compliment. Um, it's kind of cool because I, I was like really. I remember playing Ridiculous Fishing for quite a while when it was first out. Not when it first out, for a while, um, after it had been out for a while. Um, but for a few days, I was like totally addicted to that game. I got my sister addicted too. Um, and I was just thought it was like a really f fun arcadey game that was simple, but when I started to think about folded level design, it like really realized it's how brilliant it is. Um, yeah, and actually I was talking to Rami on Twitter, um, Ridiculous Fishing is actually a four part game loop, right, you go down, you go up, you shoot all the fish, and then there's the update, uh, the upgrade cycle. So you want to go back with like new tools. So it's actually a really nice loop. So I'm sort of doing that. It's not, mine's a little bit more like Star Sea Pilgrim. Um, <coughs> so. Um, this might be kind of dumb, but... see this I just want to <laughs> the fuck huh interesting <laughs> nice try rocking oh interesting I'll have to check this out. Z. I like how you just add Z and it's automatically zombie. Pretty much. So, hopefully this should print when it's done. I think I'm not... By the way, anybody who got uh, big plans for New Year's Eve, I'm actually just staying in today um, <coughs> as I still have a bit of a cold.
Uh, okay, I am not familiar with Castle Minor Z. Zex. I think I'm gonna make this not a linear thing. It should, it should be a lot faster. I think when it gets to the end. Ship it. Uh, there is no, you cannot fall out the bottom of the level. Uh, there's no, there's no, there's no respawn. There, there is no bottom of the level. <laughs> it repeats infinitely, so. Um. Yeah, that, that concept just doesn't actually exist. There is, there, you do, you are respawned, um, when you are, Okay, so it is correct. It is that's working. Um, yes, yeah, yes. Are you smoke lord? Is this the? Is this um? I I guess you you still don't know too much about the game. Yeah, it's a it's a three torus. That's what the game. That's what the geometry is. So it's it's wrapped around. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. Because I've talked about it before. I think earlier, before the holiday, I was talking about... I was like... There was one stream where I was explaining the three Taurus. It's basically... Um, let me see if I still have the gifts. Um, like, with this screen wrapping, right? In 2D screen wrapping, you are... Um, you are basically on the surface of a of a torus. That's that's two D screen wrapping. Um, like yeah, this is basically on the surface of this. So we are on the three D surface of a four D donut, at least in in sort of the basic early levels.
Um, So I'm just I'm just doing tests at the moment. Uh, so all this code is pretty much junk. Any anybody got game related New Year's resolutions? My plan is to spend more time outside of making this game. Uh, I I think I need a. I, I'd like to actually have a life in 2012. I mean, uh, whatever next year is, 2016. How do I cut a cut it short? Less life, more game, more dev. I think for me, just cause, because the last three years has been like nothing but dev. Um, shit. Yeah, it's been nothing but this game. And, and I, you know, the game's come a really long way. And I think it's time to, yes, yes, I like none superiors. I need to, <laughs> uh, it sounds kind of lame. I'm going to join the gym. I think I'm going to wait until the second week of January, though, because I, I think a lot of people will be joining tomorrow <laughs> um, variety mega jam what is that so the thing is I don't want to... yeah this is kind of annoying the way I'm doing it right now Do you think more dev will help with the stress? Like I, I need to, my, my two things are, yeah, definitely being health, more healthy. And I think that's, that's going to mean a regular sleep schedule for me. I can't do the, yeah, these last few days I've been going to sleep like close to midnight and getting up around eight. And that's been a lot better than like going to sleep at 7 a.m. and waking up at 2 p.m. Okay, well, that sounds great that the uh, source of most of the stress is gone. Um, no, man, sleep is important. Well, the thing I found is if I don't get good sleep, my mind is just like not quite there when I'm programming.
So, um, so it's like if I don't get enough sleep and I just keep working, I'm working. It's takes me longer to do stuff, and um, and I'm not as focused or productive. So. Mm. Yeah, I know what you mean about being productive. Like once, when you have a really good productive day, it's actually really great. Annual variety mega jam. Oh yeah, first ten days of 2016, make ten games in ten totally different genres. Yes. Let me tweet about this. Mokuzma, are you doing this? Last one he did 610. <laughs> well, I've been making the same game for over three years now, so. Yeah, I know he's done it. Uh, what is this? Oh, 2016 themes. Oh, this is pretty good. Business to government. The long and illustrious history of the Variety Jam. Okay, it's not really my name, but I'm Drucken. Dude's awesome. I actually met up with him when I was in Toronto recently and talked about uh, the invert mode, which is really great. Third ever and the second official one. Nice. Well, the where are the games going to be posted? I wonder if it's. I guess people would just. You would just post stuff here, I guess, if you want to join. I'm not going to do it. Because it's crazy. Oh, okay. It's using itch.io. <coughs> Does he have games on itch.io? Ah, of course. Tend to your garden in the void and explore the fleeting darkness. An experimental journey, beloved by some. <laughs> Lived with him for a year. <laughs> That's a lot of Draken. That must be a fun place to talk about games. Alright, fading to normal. Um...
this is my prototyping code. So I really need the default color to just be not fucked up. Fade to white. Oh, huh, see, it's not working. Interesting. Is this what it means? Speed it up a bit. No, the jam starts, well, I guess it's whatever your own time zone is. Um, for me, it wouldn't be another 10 hours, but I'm not doing it, though. Why the fuck is this not working? Oh, right. Stupid. 
Dog789, uh, yeah, the game used to be called Relativity. Uh, I made the name change a while ago, like back in September. Um, is that what you're referring to? Yeah, it used to be called Relativity, and I changed it to Manifold Garden in September, but there hasn't been a name change since. By the way, if you are new and you're watching the stream and you're enjoying it, you should definitely follow stuff. Oh yeah, no worries, no worries. I just, uh, yeah, I need to keep getting the news out. It's, it's hard with the name change. Uh, I gotta, it's like almost a new game. I am I I I was into building interactive installations. I have not worked on anything other than this game in the last three years. Um, so I would like to do more of those uh, once the game is done. The oh, thanks, man. The yeah, I, it was it was a tough decision to make but i'm very happy with it i think i think it's been it's definitely a better name than relativity uh for a number of reasons and and i think it's it's gone a li much better than i expected it actually the name change ended up being my biggest um uh my biggest press saturation which is interesting i was like oh i should change the name of the game every day so I, I'm trying to get it where if it's fading, I should be able to, I don't know why it's not going back into normal mode. Um, like this is very weird to me. Fuck. Fuck me. Um, looks better with the non caps. Yeah, it is. It is much more Googleable, and I can follow conversations about it on Twitter. And I'm the the best part is the URL, which I am. Yes. Um. Well, if I wasn't being distracted by the chat, I would just be distracted by Netflix or whatever. All right, so here we go. Should be fading to white. Um, oh, fuck. Right, so, hmm. Hmm. All right, so the problem is when it fades, it starts all the way from one. And I think I'd actually want it to be like current fade level. Ugh, this is the worst. It's just getting more and more. Hey, Henry Seg. Uh, what do you mean by more mathematically precise?
<laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The name. The name is, yeah. Because the, the thing is, <coughs> it was called Relativity um, because of the Escher print, right? Which, it's about people being relative to one another. Um, except everybody thinks of relativity like Einstein's theory of relativity. So it was sort of... The thing is, it's like relativity is really just about things. It's the idea of things being relative to one another, which totally makes sense here. But everyone does think of it as the theory of relativity. So that that wasn't a good name for that reason as well. It was like... Like, <clears throat> when it was called relativity, people were always like, so explain to me how you use relativity in in the game. And I, I did play with that mechanic a bit, but it, it was it was going to be very different. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it is. But, but yeah, Euclidean manifold, that, like, totally makes sense. Although, I guess that term is not super common uh, in, like, everyday use. But um, but that's fine. I think it, it ends up... There's not another game... At least I couldn't find another game on Steam that had the word Manifold. Yeah, there was also that. Um, apparently, the Escher estate is pretty aggressive with pursuing all the copyright stuff. And, like, you know, the game isn't... Okay, there we go. See, that's a lot better, right? So the reason it was like there was like a flash before because it would go straight from one, but now it takes whatever the current level is, and it resets it. So I was thinking like there would be places you can go to, and um, and what they would do is if you can get to them before you slowly fade it to white it resets it and then of course it goes back to um then it, it kind of constantly so you're sort of constantly battling this time element when you are in the um in the inverse mode uh jeff weeks yes actually you know what i don't have a his book was actually a huge influence. It actually helped me figure it out, like, the, uh, the what's it called? The Shape of Space. Um, by the way, the, everyone, the book I'm talking about with Henry Seg, it's by a mathematician, Jeffrey Weeks. I, I actually do think I have a bunch of his games. Um, curve? Curve Spaces? I think this is... Yeah, we played with... Uh, yeah, this is... Um, I think this is his. Um. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, yeah. This is uh, this is. They're not the most user friendly, but it is very, yeah. So this is the the three tours, right? Which is the space that I have, and he's got a bunch of other spaces. This is kind of really cool. Um, oh, I'll have to check out the. Um, yeah, you know, it, it was, I was kind of bummed when I found his stuff because, like, he's actually made a bunch of other games as well. I don't... Do I have them? I downloaded them. I read the book. The book was wonderful. I highly recommend it. Taurus Games. Yeah, no, no. They're actually... Here they are. They're not... Um, they're actually free, too. Um, yeah, I mean, Three Taurus is one of the basic ones. Um, 
What's wrong with my mouse? Oh, arrow keys. Yeah. I was using WASD. Yeah, so... I mean, this stuff gets like a little bit too crazy. Um, just in terms of trying to make gameplay. But it is... Yeah, no, I was kind of bummed when I found this stuff. Because I was going to put like... I I was gonna one of the features I was gonna put for Manifold Garden was that it was the first simulation of it, but then he did it already, and I was like, oh. And he plus he kind of made a game like this is the stuff. Um, this stuff is like super cool. Um, yeah. So we have like I'm gonna have like some half turn space. He's at the it's the tiling, right? So like. It's, it's, anyway, you can see this kind of stuff, but it really helped me a lot with visualizing, um, yeah, the UI is kind of weird, can I, I don't think I can turn, oh, Oh yeah, you can only you can't turn. Yeah, you can't turn if you are. I actually think that can happen a lot faster. Uh, I think I might do that in the end. It just it's, it's like they're they're really complicated concepts to build up to. So you have to like get the um, you have to get the learning curve right. But yes, I would like to do that. It's in some ways, almost like a um, a uh, first-person version of. I mean, I have I have very strict mechanics, so that that stuff does involve breaking things, which I'm not opposed to doing in the later stages of the game. Plus, like, the level design would just be a, f a nightmare for that. Um... So, like, yeah, you know, we'll be running around and it's just starting to fade to white. And then you, the idea is sort of you want to find these different checkpoints where it will reset you to normal. Um, so let's let's do that with um, I mean, I, I think you would actually just build levels normally um, with this, and it's just about wrapping. I yeah, I have no idea. I haven't even thought about that. Um, there's yeah, I mean, it's like with, with the we are already doing stuff with three tours where we're oh, uh, you know, we've got the half turn stuff later on, and that's 
those are like those are enough challenging questions. Um, yeah, it's it's like basically what Henry Seg is saying. It's I would design it like this. Is just visualizing it and connecting them would be very different. Um, Hey, uh, yeah, post a link. Actually, Henry Seg, definitely post a link. I'd like to see that too. I'm not sure which one you guys are talking about. But yes, do post it. Um, yeah, you should be able to. By heart, this is like a VR thing. Oh shit, this is kind of cool. Arrow keys, WSD. Okay, why is it? Uh. Okay, so like W is like tilt up. Oh, oh, okay, I see, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is very cool. I know, I've met Vihard before. I, I know her brother better. Um, Heart Laboratories. Um, they're making the game, uh, yeah, Synthesis Game. Uh, it's actually kind of funny, because I... I met this, I knew Vi Hart before because she also did some stuff with balloons, which I used to do, like with math. And then I met Chris totally at like Indie, IndieCade in New York. And his game was really cool. And then he invited me to this party in San Francisco and then I found out he was Vi Hart's brother. Um, just left handed, right. It's not Euclid, it's hyperbolic. Wait, what the fuck? Okay, so... Okay. Right, so... The repetition is just this one thing. It looks a little close. I wish I could... I wish this was a little bit farther back. But, like, every... It's just this one shape, right? Wait, does it zoom in? Or... This is weird. Oh, shit. Ah, uh, come on, man. I could see that. I could see the popping in. There's six cubes. Those cubes are six around the edges. Um. This is a uh, hyperbolic space.
I'm gonna tweet about it. Is it is it okay if I tweet about this? This isn't like a private thing, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I was just kidding. I was not, uh, yeah. It's, it's more just like that's something that I struggle in our game, like getting that, that pop in to be totally smooth. We just fake it with, with fog. I mean, that's kind of cool though. Yes. What is it? Just visualizing hyperbolic space? Let's attach a picture. Whoa, Jesus. Hey, no, uh, this is something that Henry Sig in the chat was telling us about. Uh, we were talking about geometry. Uh, I, I did, I've met Fihard once at this, her, like, office in San Francisco a few years ago, but, um, yeah, and, uh, this is just really cool. So this is, like, yeah, see, the things I, I wouldn't have, the thing with this is you need, I would need, like, multiple gravities, which could work if we allowed this, but this would have to be, like, a super late... The visuals are freaking cool, though. Do you guys just have, um, is this all just shader stuff, or is there, like, is the geometry actually... There's no actual geometry, right? Because how else, how would you build it? Um... Yeah. Anyway, let's, I gotta get back to work. So this should be, um, we're gonna make this a trigger. And it's, if you run into this, layer. So if you run into the trigger, Set uh, Oops, I'll post the actual. So we are, uh, this is my weird prototyping face. So the trees are gonna act as, uh, and again, I'm, I'm stealing this from Starcy Pilgrim, but in Starcy Pilgrim, when you're in the invert mode, um, what creepy tentacle? Oh, that's a tree. This just looks weird. I'm making Octodad. But, um, the, um, you, 
you can like extend your time in here. I think when you collect seeds, yeah, so I, I've taken it. So this would be... Uh, this is really bad coding. Oh shit. Wait, this guy's saying this is how, this is what it looks like when you leave the center. Um, you can, how do you leave the center in that? Oh, what the fuck? Jesus. Holy shit. This is crazy. Oh, if you... What the fuck? Dude, this is sick. What? Oh my god. Um... What the fuck? This is so cool. I guess, is it just, it's just nine of them, right? Damn, I think like this, I can see it being something I would use. Like, fuck. Oh man. <laughs> this is so cool. God, like imagine this. The ending of, of, of MG should be something like this, where you go into hyperbolic mode. Um. The weird thing is that it looks like it's just, it's so weird because it, like when you move close to something, it doesn't, it doesn't look like you're moving forward. It just looks like your field of view is expand or is shrinking. Like it's like, it looks like you're zooming in. Okay. This one looks like your Z fightings. This looks so cool. Um, damn. There's no, if you move through the corner, oh, I see, if you move through the corner, there's no wrap. Right. Oh, yeah, I see, I see, I see. Uh, wait, what? Damn. Um, can I? Wait, does this mean that it'll work on my phone? Wait a minute. Cause I've got I've got Google Cardboard. Hold on. Oh shit! Hey! Hey! Hold on. Oh 
Oh, where's my Google Cardboard when I actually need to use it? cardboard thing for like months now for over a year and then the one time I actually want to use it I can't find it oh yes here we go so I've got, um, this is, this is sick. Hold on, here's my Google Cardboard. Hold on, let me. Uh, actually, no, I'll leave the camera size. Hold on a second. How does this work again? Okay, there we go. Oh my god! Okay, I gotta take off my glasses. Holy shit. Whoa. This is pretty cool. This actually works really well. What the fuck? Oh shit. This is the coolest thing I've done with this. Except I can't move. I guess that's a thing. Um, how do I also can't switch modes on this? Yeah, how do you, can you switch modes on mobile? That's just, um, yeah, I guess you can't move. Um, wow. Um, This is so sick! <laughs> Fucking A. Damn, what VR is so cool. Damn, this is really, really neat. I don't know if I can... Anyway, that's kind of what it looks like. It actually works really well. Holy shit, it has motion tracking! <laughs> Whoa, damn! Oh man, this actually works. I gotta take a picture. But I gotta use my... Hmm. How does one take a picture when my phone is being... That's a, that's a problem with this. I'll just take a screenshot. This is really cool. Uh. 
Um, where is this? Sorry, I just gotta. I have to. Um, <laughs> I have to tweet about it. That's how excited I am. But it's not letting me copy the link. What the hell? Ugh. Hmm. Ah, whatever, I'll do it after. Um Yeah, yeah, that's the way um hyperbolic stuff runs in the shader. That is kinda how we, we are doing it. Um Yeah, well for me it's like cause I have actual all the gameplay stuff, um so I'm I'm having some trouble with that. Um, the hell, my phone isn't letting me. It's... Ah, whatever. I'll do it after. Man, this is really really cool. I mean, I I, I didn't. Yeah, not motion tracking. I meant rotation. Um, damn, this is sick. Very cool. Why can't I... Oh, there we go. I got it. Yeah, I don't actually do a whole lot of VR, but uh, but yeah, man, that rotation's really cool. That was sick. Um. Are you guys planning on making more of it? Um, oh, and uh, just FYI, the book for everyone, The Shape of Space. That's actually not such a great cover. There's one with like Einstein, um, but yeah, that's that's the book that I've been using. Um, So I think I think you can escape, uh, Henry Seg, because a few people are saying that they've escaped. Um, yeah, I didn't mean. Yeah, man, that's cool. Uh, I think we were talking about. I don't even know what we're talking about. I'm maybe I should stop streaming when I'm trying to work. That is cool, though. Um...
Where is my... Too, too many distractions. the fuck Oh, I see. It's got a cusp boundary. Interesting. Hey, OFX360. We've just been talking about hyperbolic space. Um, if you are new, we were looking at this thing that Henry Seg um, Yes. Oh yeah, so this is just like, I'm just writing garbage code at the moment. Um, mostly just to test something. So like, when you get to the tree, it should be... Uh, there we go. So it's going to be like this, where it'll... Like, the trees... So I need, I need something for the tree to indicate that it's a... Um, Like to show that you can sort of act as a it like acts as a recharge area, and then once you leave it, um, so I think we need to somehow make the trees glow, and then when you. You should also use up the tree. Yeah, that's...
so it's like you can kind of find so the tree leaves need to be glowing oh yeah and then i need to so yeah the the tree material is not ugh okay that's Um, All right, I'm actually going to end the stream here. Uh, but anyway, that's that's been kind of super, super cool. Um, so yeah, these are the links. So check out this thing that uh, Henry Seg told us about, posting the link again. Um, And uh, we have, so the invert mode, you, you know, you, the way I'm just kind of review it. So, and, and if you don't want to hear about, about it, uh, now would be a good time to check out. Um, the idea is that it, um, Let's see, we'll get it running. So yeah, this is the normal mode you're playing and then what'll happen is there's like a, some button that you can press, which will then take you into invert mode. Once you're in an invert mode, you can do stuff that you can't normally do, but you can't change gravity. Um, however, this whole time, it won't be this fast, but it'll start to fade to white. Once it goes fully white, it, it puts you back at that place where you started previously when you press the button so it resets however when you go near a tree it recharges your invert mode time and then it kind of keeps resetting again so it, it becomes like about you can sort of plan your path uh knowing where trees are etc 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 um so I have it all kind of set up, um, and it just, the code is really crappy right now, but we're just sort of prototyping this, and then we'll kind of go through, once I've got all the things set up, we'll go through and redo everything again. Uh, so that's where it's at. Uh, I think I've been streaming for about an hour, a little over an hour and a half now, so that's that's that'll be it for today. Um, huge thanks to all of you for stopping by. Uh, if you... Like the stream, you should follow, and um, hope you've all had a wonderful 2015, and I wish you all the best in 2016. So, uh, happy new year, and I will see you, I will see you next year, unless I decide to stream later tonight uh, for some reason. But yes, see you all next year. Take care.